In this video, shot in 1991, during a total eclipse of the sun, the television camera focused on a bright object in the sky. It then panned down to the roofs to establish the relative position and distance of the UFO. Here is the object on the film editor's screen. It's like a spinning top or a saucer which is turning. And now another UFO in the Mexican sky. Let's look at it again on the editor's screen. These are totally amazing images. This is 1992. Watch the UFO as it moves about the sky. Here it is, captured closer. Nineteen ninety four and another UFO. This time in the skies over Mexico City itself. Sometimes the UFOs present themselves in formation, like this sighting in 1994. The question as to the authenticity of the films seems to have been answered by Professor Quesada. To be a hoax, they would have had to have falsified the film on hundreds of videos taken by the vigilantes. A very expensive conspiracy. Who could possibly gain from it? Here are still photographs taken by Paul Trent, a farmer in Oregon in 1950. These have been verified by military aviation laboratories in the USA. Here is a photo of a UFO taken in Germany and a thermographic analysis. These are two photographs taken in New Mexico, USA, in 1992, near the Manzana atomic base. UFO sightings are common over these kind of facilities. And this is a long series of photos taken in 1987 by a Mr. and Mrs. Walton in the Gulf Breeze area of the USA. Some claim that there are hopes but examination of the photographs by a leading expert has confirmed their authenticity. I was confronted with the problem of, um, could this be real? Uh, it was hard to imagine that Mr. Walters could hoax photos and then have everybody else, have so many other witnesses agree with him. It would have to be a grand conspiracy, or else other people were seeing something and he was photographing it. In any case, I uh, studied the photos very carefully. Uh, my conclusion is that all those sightings were real. It's important to remember that the same phenomenon was photographed in other countries at the same time. In 
As you can see from the following examples, there are many kinds of UFOs. Another element in the study of UFOs is the examination of traces that are left on the ground where alleged sightings have taken place. Sometimes a whitish substance falls from the UFO. Its analysis has given some disconcerting results. What have we found so far? There are two important things. The first was that the ground was not burnt as we thought. It was, in fact, crystallized by microwave radiation. The microwave in question would have been 50 million times stronger than an industrial oven. Imagine the power of it. We managed to test the phenomenon in the laboratory. Galileo would have been proud of us. We demonstrated the cause of the crystallization, and nobody can say it isn't true, because we did it under laboratory conditions. We examined deposits formed on the ground by the UFOs, and these gave us some disconcerting results. In 1957, a deposit from a UFO was analyzed, and it was found to contain magnesium, a magnesium much heavier than anything known on Earth. It didn't have a nucleus, and it was really much heavier than our magnesium. It was definitely magnesium from space. The French, in 1967, found a similar deposit. And this was also magnesium, and it was much heavier than terrestrial magnesium. I have a simple conclusion from all of this, and other evidence. I'm absolutely convinced it was of extraterrestrial origin. On this planet, we don't have the technology to make this form of magnesium. I'm convinced of this. And what do the authorities say about UFOs? For many years they've denied or ridiculed these stories, but their attitude has now partially changed. We saw a big object in the sky which we couldn't identify. It had very powerful lights, which were directed at the ground. In 1989 and 1990, there were numerous sightings of a UFO in Belgium, by more than 2,000 civilians and numerous police patrols. It was a triangular object, with three lights at the top and one in the centre. It was flying silently, at very low altitude, just above the ground. This photograph of the object complete with thermographic analysis is a filmed sequence. Belgian military aviation authorities have officially joined a collaborative study of the case after ground radar revealed the presence of the object, some jet fighters were scrambled to intercept the UFO, but without success, because the object performed some incredible maneuvers, demonstrating it was in some way guided. Was it an experimental military aircraft, like the stealth bomber? The US government has denied this possibility. The stealth bomber is also noisy, and the question is why would a foreign experimental plane fly at low altitude over a densely populated area? Belgian Air Force General Charles de Brewer held a press conference on the 18th of December 1989 to confirm that they had intercepted UFOs. His written report states, there were no signs of danger 
The mystery of their origin remains, but the phenomena exists. It is real. A été contacté plusieurs fois pour demander s'ils avaient des observations au radar aussi. Et nous avons donc donc les deux radars ont contacté. The UFO sighted over Belgium is very similar to that sighted over Ticino by our Swiss housewife, and the UFOs filmed over Pueblo in Mexico. Other official confirmation includes the president of Brazil, President Kubitschek, who in 1958 declared that a Brazilian Navy ship had sighted and photographed a flying saucer. These are the documents. Spain has recently declassified some documents which confirm the sightings of UFOs. In June 1976, on the Canary Islands, hundreds of people saw a white light which emitted rays. It is written by a local military commander. In addition, there are accounts of humanoids being seen during UFO landings. Still in Spain, a highly luminous disk was seen to come out of the sea. This sighting was confirmed at the same time in Italy. In 1978, the three pilots of a Spanish supercaravel flying over Valencia saw three red lights, which seemed to be at first on a collision course and then to dance in front of the aircraft. The caravel was forced to make an emergency landing and fighters were scrambled to intercept, but they failed to make contact. In 1975, on the Badenes Reales military base near Navarra, a UFO was seen at low altitude. Until the end of 1990, the Spanish government had always denied the existence of any UFO file. And the same goes for the UK. Before 1990, there had only been the occasional comments as we list here. Lord Dowding, the air chief in 1954, suggested that 10,000 UFO sightings had been made and recorded. He also asserted that these were of extraterrestrial origin. In 1954, an RAF pilot named Saladin encountered some UFOs. This is Saladin's sketch. Ralph Noyes, Defense Secretary, is said by 1964 to have seen Air Force film of UFOs. In 1978, an English policeman, Tony Dodd, saw a UFO with a colleague. Then, in 1980, it was the turn of PC Alan Godfrey. And yet, as we have seen, there was no official confirmation of the sightings. All were treated as top secret. This secrecy has extended to the highest levels, with Chief of Staff Admiral Hill Norton declaring that he was kept in the dark on the existence of a special UFO department. An exceptional case from Woodbridge in Suffolk involved what is believed to be a case of broken down UFO. Air Force police patrols who went to the spot described the object as metallic and resting on three legs, emitting a strong white light. As they got closer to the object, the engines of their cars cut out and the radio contact was lost. This is not science fiction. The episode is confirmed in a report by the deputy commander of the base, Lieutenant Colonel Charles Halt. In it, you can read that the next day, traces left by the object were found on the ground. According to the reports of the Air Force patrol, three humanoids were seen to leave the UFO. They were approximately one meter tall, with big heads and dressed in silver. The commander of the base, General Gordon Williams, is reported to have said, that the creatures seem to communicate by a series of gestures and telepathy. This encounter has never been officially confirmed.